What's going on, everyone? We are back here live here on the OT Radio Show. And man, oh man, we got a special show for y'all today. Now, y'all know we are celebrating 50 years of hip hop. And you know, OT is bringing on some of the hottest producers, some of the hottest artists, some of the hottest B boys. And you know, I got a special one for y'all today. A very special one. Today, we have multi platinum hip hop music producer, composer, engineer, songwriter, 2021 BMI RB Hip Hop Award. Listen, he had produced some of the hottest favorite artists out there from old to new, like Luda, DJ Quick, Machine Gun Kelly, one of my favorite, Ghostface, Dog Pound. You know what I mean, hey, got to represent the West Coast. You know what I mean, Wale, Rick Ross, and he got some syndicated credit, y'all. Now, some of y'all might not understand what syndicated credit is, so let me just go ahead and give y'all a little bit of detail. You know, like when you're watching the show, like on BET or you're watching a show on Fox, and you hear the music in the background and stuff like that, and you hear artists, hey, he got syndicated credit for BT, Amazon Prime, MTV, VH1. Need I say more? Need I say more? Well, listen, he here. We're going to talk to him. So let me let me go ahead and introduce Mr. LT Mo. What's going on with you, bro? Patience, patience, appreciate you. Man, up, appreciate man? you having me, man. I'm cool, oh, man. man. Oh, man, no doubt about that. No doubt about that. Well, first, man, let's just go ahead and dive into it, man. You know, we're celebrating 50 years of hip-hop, right? And you've been in the game for a minute, right? You have produced some of the hottest artists out there. You have been doing so much, especially in the TV world, even in the video game world, you know what I mean? Especially in the video game world. So tell everybody where you from and how you got started to do all this, man, because I got to know. Well, man, I'm I'm born and raised in Cleveland, Ohio, man. Mm. Straight out, straight out, of, straight out of Cleveland. You know what I'm saying? Warrensville to be specific, but Cleveland. You mm. dig what I'm saying? Um, man, I got started. I got started just you know listening to hip hop. You know, hearing um hearing DJ Premier, Guru, Gangstar, um the early DJ Quick albums. Um, those two people right there really got me wanting to you know get into it. Um, my uncle Daryl. He plays guitar or whatever. So we was always over his house fooling around on his equipment and all that as well. And um, I think the moment that really made me take it serious was when, was when Bone came out. Mm. Um, when Bone hit, so i never forget it. It was a Saturday night. Mix show was on. And um had my little blank tape in. I'm dubbing, you know, dubbing the show and all that. Uh. Right. I'm that old. <laughs> um, <laughs> um and I never forget. I caught um, I caught Busy Bones verse. I caught I caught his verse, mm-hmm. and you know I'm listening to it like, man, this is crazy. Oh my god, what is this? So after it goes off, and you know the DJ usually uh, comes in and says what record it is he played and all that stuff. And um, man, the DJ said Cleveland's on. I lost my mind. I literally lost it. Um, Man, and, and from that moment on, I like, oh, this we can do this for real from here, mm-hmm. you know. And that was it. That hearing, 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 hearing that DJ say Cleveland's very young, let a fire up under me so crazy. And sh- I've been on a mission ever since, man. That was like 94, 95. Woo, woo. Cause I ain't gonna lie, when Bone hit, bro, that was a whole nother level right there, man. You know what I mean? Cause uh, you know, I I remember listening to Twister and everybody, but then when Bone hit, I was like, damn, bro, who are these boys? And uh, yeah. I, I ain't going sugarcoat it, man. I ain't know Cleveland had it in them. You know what I mean? Because, see, I'm from Philly, so, you know, we don't we don't really listen to it, but when them boys hit, and there's a lot of people out there in Cleveland that's fire. There's a lot of people that, you know what I mean, it's definitely fire. And, uh, hey, man, big ups to Cleveland, bro. Big ups to Cleveland. Because the hip-hop Absolutely. world, big ups to them, man, for real. So, Let's talk about a little bit of something, man. How did you come up with this name, LT Mo, man? Um, actually, it kind of got given to me, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, so in the fifth grade, uh, there was a cat that I had class with. 
his name was actually LT. His real name is Thomas. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, we was cool. We used to hang out at recess and hit the backflips and all that stuff. And um, I'll never forget this cat named John Babb. He kept calling me LT and I kept having to correct him. Mm-hmm. And he wouldn't listen. And then next thing you know, it kind of caught on. Like everybody else started calling me LT because of him. Mm-hmm. Because wow. my real my real name is Ty. He's like, well, your name Ty, it don't matter. It's the same thing. I'm like, oh my God. So <laughs> it kind of just it kind of just stuck. And then it kind of it progressed over the years, but I just I just kept it, you know what I'm saying? Okay, okay, okay. So I gotta know this, man. You know, you gotta tell me a story about your first production and and how it was. You know what I mean? Because you know, we're talking about the 90s. Oh, you talking about my first, the first beat I made? Or yeah, first man. Placement? Oh, the man. first beat, the first bro. Beat. The first beat, bro. You know the what beat. I mean? Because you was talking about, you know, the tape dub and everything else. Because I remember looping, you know what I mean? Pause, record, pause, record, rewind, cross, you know what I mean? So you got to talk about that, man. Because we talking about hip hop right now. We talking about hip hop. So the up. first, the very first beat I made, the equipment that I had at the time when I made it, because I had to save up money to get this equipment. Uh-huh. Um, I had a Gemini analog sampler um, mm. that cost like I want to say it cost like three hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. I had my pops keyboard. He had a, a Casio four sixty five keyboard. Um, yes. and what and my tape deck. Yes. So yes. what what ended up happening was once I got the sampler. I sampled more bounce because I always wanted to sample more bounce. Roger Trotman is that. Mm-hmm. So I sampled that. And then um, after I sampled it and looped it, I used a sound from my pop's keyboard and played like a another bass line over it. Mm-hmm. And a couple other little sounds I sprinkled in there. And then from there, what's funny is that beat ended up getting used at a show that Scarface had at the Aragon Ballroom on West 25th. Uh, me and my homeboys ended up opening up for Scarface on that beat. Mm. Mm. So that, that's, that was my very first beat. Man, oh man. Now see, once you start talking about the keyboard and the sampler, see, people people now, like the kids now don't understand everything that you had to go through. You feel what I'm saying? Because now production is totally different now compared to what it was right now. Now let's talk about your first placement now. You know what I mean? Let's talk about that. So what I was got, the feelings about it? I got two first placements. One okay. I got credit for, and one I didn't get credit for. But no, it was it was it wasn't because of any malice or anything like that. As far as what I didn't get credit for, okay. um, the communication just got messed up. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Uh, so my technically my very first placement was on Jim Jones. Um, I think what's that album called? His first album on the way to church or something like that. Um, the record is called Machine Gun Fire. And that's the very first placement that I had, but I didn't get credit for it or whatever. My man from the house or whatever, my man Ray, he used to run with Dipset and them. Mm -hmm. And he always would tell, he would, you know, he was putting me and my partners and them in the studio and, you know, he liked the beats and all that. He was like, man, give me a, give me a little CD or whatever, man. I want to take it up there to, uh, Cam and them to check you out. And he took it up there. And never heard from him after that. So fast wow. forward, fast forward after the record come out, after the album come out, one of my cousins called and told me, like, man, you got a beat on Jim Jones. I'm like, what? And I'm like, nah, man, you got no beat on there. Sure enough, when I went home to visit, I hooked up with my cousin. He played it for me. The beat was on there on the album. I was like, wow. And then shortly after that, my man Ray called me from jail. So mm-hmm. that's what happened. Ray went to jail. Mm. So that, that was the that was the loss of communication. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying, but after that, then my uh my placement after that was the ludicrous placement. That was the uh spur of the moment featuring DJ Quick and Kimmy um on the Red Light District album. Oh man, so 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 what was your feeling when you heard that one? Because you know uh, Luda came out buzzing. Yeah, I was like, man, I need to go make some more beats so this can keep happening. <laughs> 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 that 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 was my response. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was like, oh no, we need this to keep happening. Cause it was it was the most I had ever been paid for a beat. Cause back home I was selling beats for like two, three hundred dollars, whatever. So when my manager at the time gave me that phone call, now at this time I'm living in Atlanta already at this time. Okay. Uh okay. 
I'm about I'm to living, ask you that. Yeah, I was living with Stat Quo for like my first year and a half in Atlanta. Mm. And um, I'm at the house actually. Um, and I get a call from me and Stat had the same manager. I get a call from my manager. He like, man, what you doing? I'm like, man, I'm chilling. What's up? He was like, man, you just got your first placement. I'm like, what? It was like, yep. Mm. Tell me what it was, the name of the record and all that. He mm -hmm. was like, yep. He was like, um, they're giving you 5000 for it. Um, you get 50% of the publishing. You're getting three points on the album. He ran down Dang. all the logistics, like, right there on the phone. Dang. And I was on cloud nine. I went from two, $300 to $5,000. I'm like. <laughs> and one whop. And one yeah. whop. I'm like, yeah. And, man. And Luda album made some money. So, you know, you, you didn't already. Whew. <laughs> Enough yeah, that album ended up going, like, I want to say. Three times platinum, platinum, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did. Dang. Yeah, I went straight down to the basement, start making beats after that phone call. As soon as we hung up, I'm like, "Yeah, nah, we need this to keep going, buddy. That's it right there. This is it. We got it." <laughs> All right, so so let's talk about that a little bit, man, because now you already got your first, you know, you got your first artist placement. Now things is buzzing for you, right? You know, when did when did actually because i know you said you know you was happy but when did reality really set in with you and said hey man you know i'm one of the top producers out here man that's 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 bust mm, i never felt like that okay but i did i did feel like all right things are starting to progress mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying that's really what it was it, it was more about the progression than anything else like all right i'm progressing i came mm -hmm. down i wrote you know i came down here you know on face you did yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And um it's working out. Okay. So okay. that that's more it was more that than anything else. Okay. 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 I like that response. I I ain't gonna sugarcoat it, bro. I love that response because that tells me that you like one of these uh you ain't you don't have to be up 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 in the spotlight, right? You no, know I, I mean? yeah, yeah, I got yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like that. I like that, man. You know what I mean? We call y'all the silence uh assassins in the background because you bought y'all bring that heater. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I move in the shadows, man. I, I I usually stay low, lay low in the shadows, man, and just do what I gotta do. And yeah, like you said, I, I just let all the work and the action speak for itself. I don't, you know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So what are some of the things that you see have changed um with production uh back in the nineties to now? You know, do you see that it's much easier now? Do you see that it's more uh more complicated? Do you see that it's more, you know what I mean, uh more dynamics to it? I mean, as far as actually making the beat, yeah, mm -hmm. it's okay. easier to it's it's way easier to make a beat now than it was when I started. Yeah. But when I started, it was way easier to make a beat than it was to make one the decade prior to me starting. You dig what I'm saying? Mm, mm, mm. Okay, I got you. I got you. It's I it's it's, you. it's continuous. So, you know, that being said, um, it's definitely no hate in my heart as far as, you know, the process that the kids use now to make beats. Because, if, you know, if I was the hate on them, then I'd be a hypocrite. Because yeah. it's like, I can't say, oh, man, y'all not doing this and y'all not doing that. Because guess what we wasn't doing? We weren't playing no instruments. <laughs> we weren't recording on two inch reel, Fact. playing those instruments for the whole five minutes of the duration of the song. You know, Fact. we got we got we got technology too. We got sequencers and you know mm -hmm. metronome to keep it and quantize. We got out. So I came in with that. So mm -hmm. I'm working with the hand I was dealt with, just like these kids. They're playing. They're working with the hand that they're dealt. They're dealt yep. the hand of you know more advanced technology than yeah. the hand I was dealt. You did what I'm yeah. saying? And it's going to go, it's going to continue to go like that. So on and so forth. So yeah, I nah. agree with that. I definitely agree with that because, uh, you know, like back when we was growing up, you know what I mean? Um, it was, it was more of hard work, but I'll tell you one thing, boy, shit. I don't miss lifting them goddamn crates up. I ain't even going to sugarcoat it, bro. I don't miss lifting those crates up. I don't miss, none of that good stuff right there dude even though it was good back then you, you know what i mean you know we had we had strong arms and strong backs but boy oh boy <laughs> <laughs> man if i could just put an mp3 in it and keep it pushing bro i would love to do that i ain't and even gonna sugarcoat it <laughs> dj DJing was my start i started djing probably in like 93. 
You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I had the techniques. I had two 12s. You get what I'm saying? I had the Pioneer Mixer. Um, I was running with my uh my older, my god brother or whatever. He's like, man, Mirror got to be probably about five, six years older than me, maybe seven years older than me. But nonetheless, um, I had access to that through him. So mm-hmm. I'm, you know, I'm like 13, 14 years old, hanging out to like two, three in the morning with him learning how to DJ and see how it goes or whatever. So, yeah, I definitely got experience in carrying those crates, um, <laughs> those turntables, those bullfrog speakers. We used to have to do the little chain gang, you know what I'm saying? Because we used to set up, like, in some venues, we would set up, like, six to eight speakers. Yeah, yeah. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm yeah. a short guy, so those speakers were, like, a little bit more than half my height. You dig what I'm saying? Man, listen, man, I understand that part, dude, because sometimes I ain't going to lie to you. You know what I mean? I'm my uh on my DJ DJ Cam and DJ Wiz or whatever, you know, back then, dude. Like them big ass damn speak. Sometimes, man, you just get in a damn car, man. That joint just man, your whole back of your car is just dragging because you got so much weight in the back of it, man. Damn speakers was heavy too. People yeah. people, people don't realize <laughs> how damn speakers was heavy as hell, man. Yeah, man, man it'd be man. a dude between the speakers. Like I grab my I got my right. hand on the handle of this speaker. <laughs> And then my hand on the handle of this speaker, it's a guy in front of me, a guy in front of him, and we walking with the joints, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But DJing was like moving. Just imagine yeah. moving, like we got to move the couch. Yeah. Got to move the dryer, move the yep. refrigerator. Every gig, was it felt like you were moving. Yes, yes it was. Yes it was. Yes it was. But shout out to everybody that was doing that, man. You know what I mean? Showed the real strength. You did want to say, <laughs> even after the party. <laughs> right. Even after it was said and done, everybody that gone, you're like, damn, man, I'm tired, bro. All right, y'all, let's go ahead and lug this stuff up. And sometimes, yep, I, it up. listen, like my DJ used to say, somebody just leave it in a car, dude, because I'd be so goddamn tired, dude. Like, Ooh. hopefully, ho- look, 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 hopefully it's there in the morning time, as he said. He said, man, I hope this shit is there in the morning time. Oh, yeah, yeah, man. We, yeah, we couldn't do that. Oh, no. We couldn't man, leave oh, it man. in the car. Man, oh, man. But, hey, man, those was the good times, though. Those was the good times, man. That's yeah, good. Absolutely. You know, because when you think about it, you know, we came from the tape deck era and then CDs started coming out. So yep. it's like we moved the same way that they moved. So we moved with the hands that was dealt to us. You know, what yeah. I mean? singles was the hottest things with the instrumentals on there. You know what I mean? To give you a little sample of what the, the, the album going to come out with, you know, and, and now everything is different now. So, you know, they moving with the time. That's all I can say. Everybody move with the time and then get dealt yeah. the way they get dealt. So. Yep. So let's talk about your first placement and syndicated, right? Because you got syndicated BT, MTV, you know, uh, uh, Amazon, even in the sports world, video game world, with uh, I think it was NBA Live, or was it man? I think it was NBA Live, stuff like that, man. So, so let's talk about that. How did that come about? Um, just really, really just being around, man, and meeting different people. Um, as far as the video games, um. We met this lady by the name of Rafi that I believe still works for EA Sports. Mm -hmm. Um, And this was right after Stat signed his deal with Shady Aftermath. And, um, you know, we met up with her. and She came to us for some records and Mm. gave her some records. We did NBA Live. Yeah. We did, uh, I want to say we did one of the football games and then me and my homeboy Donnie Arcade back from the house, back from Mm -hmm. Cleveland. We did, uh, I think, King of the Ring or something like that. Mm, mm. Man, so it's like have three, it go three back. Video, yeah, it's three video games in total. Um, uh, the one on NBA Live is called Rock the Party. That was NBA Live 2005. I can't remember the uh, video game after that, but then the third one was the boxing game. And okay. that record is called uh, Knockout. Mm, look at that, y'all. The games that we played, and now you're hearing it right here. They were one of the top producers that that did it, that did it, sitting here right in front of y'all, right here, right in front of y'all. So let's talk about the stuff you got going on now, man. What do we expect to see from you in the last couple of months of 2023, bro? Because things is going by real fast, man. Um, I have a couple projects coming out um, that I'm doing with some artists. Uh, my guy, I'm doing, I got a project that I'm doing with an artist by the name of Tez McClain. Okay. Um, we dropped... We dropped an EP back in 2015 called Dopamine. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're going to revamp that project. Okay. And re-release it with some new records. Okay. 
new artwork and you know a couple other new things and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I got a I got a partner from the house from Cleveland named Drastic. We got something special we cooking up that's gonna be mm-hmm. out long before the party by the uh October. Okay, okay, it's, okay. It's gonna be that. Other than that, man, what else? Uh working on the second season of Who Made the Beat. Mm-hmm. Um and that's it, man. A couple more hat drops, you know what I'm saying? This is one of the hats right here. Yeah, I haven't yeah. dropped this one yet, but um, it's on the way. Well, let's talk about that too, man, because you just not, you know, you know, the production and everything else, I mean, just not the, the multi platinum hip hop, you know what I mean, uh music producer. You're a father too, you're a husband too. You feel what I'm saying? You know, you entrepreneur. So let's talk about your entrepreneurship. What made you get into that? Um I never liked punching the clock, even though I've punched all of them. <laughs> okay, okay. Literally, I've punched all the clocks. Uh-huh. You dig what I'm saying? I've done everything, bro. Literally, like landscaping, steel mill, you name it, I've done it. Um, uh-huh. I didn't like it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got I, it. Yeah. I, I knew I didn't want that for myself. You dig what I'm saying? And I've always been, I've always been creative, man. I've been drawing and painting probably since like kindergarten. Okay. You dig what I'm saying? So. It was all I, I knew I was always gonna make my way by by way of creativity as opposed to the regular blue collar nine to five grind. Even though that's how I was raised. I was raised blue collar, you know. Right, right. P- parents worked for the phone company. Um, you know, mm-hmm. all of that, you know, the, you know that whole spiel. Oh, you yeah. What I'm saying? Oh, yeah. yeah, I definitely know that. Grandparents yeah. worked in this worked in the steel mills mm-hmm. and all that stuff. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So yeah, I came up like that. So yeah. I'm, you know, I'm, a, I'm a multi-faceted uh, guy. You know, I can, I can make you a beat. I can paint you a picture, and I can, <laughs> you know, I can put a, I can install a toilet. You know what I'm saying? Put a radiator in your rip. You know what I mean? Like, I'm one of them guys. You know what I'm oh saying? man, yeah, man. So, so what is the inspiration behind some of your, uh, some of your artwork? You know, because you got a lot of it. You know, you got the t-shirts and the hat, and you just showed the hat that. That haven't dropped yet, but you rocking it. And I'm sitting back like, yo, I want one of them joints. Like, I ain't even sick. I'm looking at that joint like, yo, that joint to be fired for the darn winter time. So, you know, we definitely going to have to check you out on that one. You know, no, I definitely. Up. Yeah, yeah, man. So so let's talk about that a little bit, man, you know, because your inspiration behind it. Let's talk about that inspiration behind that, man. All the, all the clothing line and designs and stuff like that. Well, as far as this um this hat and the other ones before it or whatever, the brand is what well, the company is called Twisted Caps, mm-hmm. but the uh the brand is Camp Cleveland. Okay. Okay. You know, I'm from I'm from Cleveland. And really what inspired the Camp Cleveland brand was when they uh they switched the name and the mascot of the team. Mm-hmm. When it went from Cleveland Indians to the Cleveland Guardians. Right. And you know, I kind of heard the echoes. A lot of people at first they weren't too happy about the switch and all of that. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was like, man, I want to come up with something that's a happy medium between the old logo and something new. So actually, this isn't this isn't the first hat. The first hat I did is a um, it's a flip of Chief Wahoo, but it's like Chief Wahoo wearing a Jason mask. What? Oh man, that's why that's why I call it Camp Cleveland because I'm a big fan of the Friday the Thirteenth franchise. Right. It's like my favorite movie franchise as far as horror films and all that stuff. Uh-huh. So I kind of combined it too. So Camp Crystal Lake, Camp Cleveland, and there's an actual place was an actual place called Camp Cleveland. Mm-hmm. Um, that was right around the corner from where I grew up at, yeah. Yeah. or whatnot. So you know, just kind of merging the two, the two mm-hmm. things together and whatnot, and you know, doing something for the city. Oh yeah, giving oh, giving yeah. them giving them an alternative. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So you in so so where you at now? Are you still in Atlanta now? No, I'm in California. Oh man, Cali. How how was the transition, bro, from you know Cleveland to Atlanta to 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 Cali now? How was that transition, as far as for you? Um, seamless for me to be seamless. honest, man. I've never had a problem adjusting. Okay. I've never okay. I've never had a problem adjusting to new um new territory, if you will. Okay. Um, that's never been an issue for me. Like even like I said, we just moved and you know, I I slept great the first night. I know that's right. I know that's no, right. Wasn't no weird vibes of energy to me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know, man, I was snoozing, didn't lose no sleep. <laughs> um, 
but it's like that moving to different cities too it's i don't know i, I really can't explain it there's really no adjustment time it's, it's immediate for me okay 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 yeah man because i know when i uh when i moved from philly to atlanta to atlanta to alabama man boy i seen when they talk about country <laughs> i've seen it I, i've seen it down bama but shout out to them man because they treated me real good bro like i i i learned how to barbecue down there man to the point of when i came back home to philly it's like everybody like yo dude show me how you barbecue like I yeah. ain't going to sugarcoat it, man. Them boys down there, them country boys, them boys down there know how to cook, and I ain't going to sugarcoat that right there. So shout out to all my Alabama boys. Oh yeah, there. we can, I still got good friends down there too. Yeah, we get busy in Cleveland on the barbecue, though. You know what I'm saying? But I ah. will say, I will say this now, okay? Because I'm thinking about it now that you said that. So when I moved from Cleveland to Atlanta, mm -hmm. mind you, I'm 25. This was two. I moved to Atlanta in 2003, October of 2003. Okay. What I did have to get used to, people were friendly, if you yeah. will. Yeah. You know, and I didn't I didn't understand that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because in Cleveland, you know, I, I haven't lived in Cleveland and in, 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 it'll be 20 years in October. Okay. Um, but when I was still living at home, you know, you don't you're not waving at strangers and smiling or nothing like that. We take we would take that as a sign of Oh, they're trying to set me up to hit a lick or yep. something, you know, like it's not a good thing, you know what I'm saying? So I never forget riding in the car with stat. We just riding. Um, I can't, uh -huh. can't remember where we were going, but somebody was on the sidewalk on the side of the street, and um they just locked eyes with us and waved. And I'm like, Stat, who is that? Right, right, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm I'm kind of like getting ready. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They signaling somebody off, but what, what's going on? They like, right. dude, they just wave and say hi. I'm like, oh yeah, no, I don't, I don't know about none of that. Bro, you know what I'm so I had to get used to that. You know, yeah. so I had to get used to walking in a room full of strangers and you know, everybody in Atlanta, speaking. yeah, everybody speaking, walking up, shaking everybody's hand and introducing yeah. you don't do that at home. <laughs> yeah. Even if you see somebody you know, you kind of like, what up, dog? Yeah, know? yeah. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know you look at you looking for the exit strategy just in case something <laughs> pop off like you know so i had to adjust to that but outside yeah. of that everything else is cool man yo but i know i know your feelings on that man was crazy man because i know when i first uh moved down there dude man and uh we had just bought a house and like i actually you know I actually end up getting a strap like yo like what the fuck is going on over here right you know what i mean people people coming past beeping the horn hey how you doing i'm, I'm sitting back like no nah, yo like like i'm staying up at night like no nah, yo like they're trying to get me on this show like too many people right. speaking to me and then i'm looking at my old lady like yo like do you know some of these cats or something like that because i don't know none of these people and you're from where i'm from so you need to tell me something she's like i don't know these people you know what i mean so now we on a hunt like oh no but yeah man they speak southern hospitality is real it, it's definitely real so but uh but you know that actually uh helps you out in the long run yeah you yeah no it, 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 yeah. it did once i adjusted and saw what it was yeah. it was like yo like every is you know the world is bigger than cleveland dude like yeah chill yeah. out you know what i'm saying like still you know head on the swivel but at the same time like you ain't got to be so you ain't got to be so tense and you know yeah Standing on your standing on the back hill of your foot, ready to pivot it. You know what I'm saying? Like you ain't gotta you ain't gotta do all that. That's a fact. That's a fact. That's that's definitely a fact. Well, hey man, listen, man, I gotta thank you, man, for joining me on this uh beautiful, beautiful year, man. Period, man. Cause we representing 50 years of hip hop and you know, bringing on one of the one of the low-key producers that's a silent killer, you know what I mean? You oh, man, I appreciate, Mo, you, man. appreciate you having me, man. You know what I mean? And uh welcome to the family, bro. So like it is, man. You know, your new artists come out, you can come on and bring them on, man. Because you know, now you're part of the family. So that's how we do it. Shout out to Sincere, you know what I mean? Because she absolutely you know I mean? Cause that's my girl right there. I appreciate her and she know how we roll. So hey man, you know, you got anybody, man, you can go ahead and shoot them my way, man. You know what I mean? Especially some of your artists, you know, because uh hey man, listen, dude, when you're doing big things, man, and you're doing things and and you humble about it and you want to low about it too a lot of times man you know what i mean that's why i like man that's why i like dude so hey man i appreciate you you know what i mean definitely join us here in the show welcome to the family going to give everybody
Go and give everybody your social media page, man, and uh, where they can find you at. Oh, man, y'all can find me at um, Instagram, Twitter, or X, formerly known as Twitter, is LTMO. Uh, Facebook is LTMO. What else? And then uh, the other Instagram is uh, Todd Moore, T X D D M X X R E. Um, the El Timo page is for all the music stuff, and the uh, the Todd Moore page is the the creative, as far as the visual arts, like the Camp Cleveland and all that stuff. And um, you know, if you want to check out some of the Camp Cleveland merch, I got to restock, but you can still go to the site and see some of the stuff. Um, it's Twisted Dash the Dash Sign Caps dot com. And uh, yeah, that's it, man. Check me out. You know what I mean? Oh, man, yo, appreciate it, man. Well, listen, man, enjoy the beautiful day. Y'all probably got out there, Kylie, because it's raining over here back to Philly. So it's definitely raining coming down. But hey, man, appreciate your day, man. And uh, yo, welcome to the family. And, man, uh, I, I, I appreciate it, bro. Listen, like I always tell people, anybody asks you how you're doing, you just tell them you're doing better than yesterday. Yes, listen, sir. Bro. All right, man, I holla at you. Thank you for joining us here on the OT Radio Show, man. Appreciate you. All right, bro, likewise. Yep. Jeez. Oh, man, y'all, good show, good show, good show. Once again, good show, man. Hey, listen, I appreciate y'all for joining us here on the OT Radio Show. Make sure, make sure, make sure you go ahead and like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. We represent 50 years of hip-hop, y'all. 50 years of hip hop, and here we are bringing some of the hottest producers, some of the hottest artists representing here on the show. Look, y'all, we'll check y'all out later. See y'all next week here on the OT Radio Show. Like I always say, someone asks you how you're doing, you just tell them you're doing better than yesterday. Thank you for watching, and make sure you follow us on all social media platforms. Y'all see it right there OT Radio Show, OT Radio Show. All right, y'all, peace and enjoy the rest of your day. Peace.